Is that yours? No, oh, Gail. Okay. Damn, other people's food. <laughs> I feel like in every shift, I have an impact. I have an impact on the lives of the pets that I see and the lives of their families, and also have an impact on the team by providing them with what they need to be able to provide the best veterinary care possible. What is Finn? <laughs> Finn has a possible foreign body, so I'm gonna take him to ultrasound and have a look and see if we can see anything. Finn's a three-year-old little domestic shorehead kitty cat, so he came to us for vomiting. And one of our main concerns with Finn is that he may have a obstruction, so a hairball of foreign bodies. Oh, it's okay, matey. I love ultrasound. It's taken several years to, to feel very comfortable with doing it, but it's a very powerful tool. Often it's the tool that actually helps us determine what we need to do with our patients. It's small intestine, and then we have Bam, something within the inside of that. That's classically what hairballs look like. It could be something completely different, but essentially there's something within the lumen of that intestine. So what we're gonna do with Finn is give him some time with some pain relief, some fluids, rehydrate him, and hopefully what happens is that foreign body will start to move as the intestine starts to move again. And fingers crossed we can uh, avert having to go to surgery to remove the foreign body. So something that I actually developed over the last couple of years is actually my passion for teaching and sharing knowledge. And one of the main uh, roles that I have here at Animal Emergency Service, sharing knowledge and being involved in the continuing professional development of our veterinarians. So I'll spend quite a lot of time teaching and mentoring vets new to the field of emergency critical care. And what I find incredibly rewarding is seeing them do things that they never thought they could do before. So ultrasound is actually one of the, the hardest skills to, to master. Because we work emergency and there's no ultrasonographers here at night, we actually all have to learn this skill. It can take several years to, to feel comfortable with what we see. Um, and the only way to get good at it is actually to sit here and watch and teach as they go through step by step. So, and this is how I was taught as well. So the movements you do make sure it's really subtle yeah. because often when you change a couple of degrees of the probe, it'll change the whole entire image. So let's start again. Next thing now, is your, your focal point. So you've got your depth, you've adjusted your focal point, now adjust, now adjust your, your frequency. Bring your trackball up, find your core edge of the spleen. Yeah, now optimize your image. Point out, that's it there. So now we've just got to pivot the probe. So without moving it, just rotate it. Okay, and as you rotate it, screw back and forward. Screw back and forward. Yeah, you got it. Brooke is one of our new veterinarians. She's just graduated, so and she's a promising uh, veterinarian. She's actually done quite well. So what we do to help transition her or ease her transition into emergency is we send her into consults, talk through things that we would sort of alert ourselves to or want to know about, and then she comes back through, gives us a bit of a rundown. And if it's something that we feel that you know she's capable of actually continuing on with the consult, then we'll guide her through that process. Otherwise, if it's something that she hasn't seen before or a bit concerned or something that I think is a bit more complicated, then what we'll do is one of our senior clinicians or myself will go in and then we'll continue on with the consult there with the owners. So we'll see what um, Brooke has to say when she comes back through. Got your present. Okay, you two. <laughs> Here's a tick. I pulled it off the dog's face. Here we go. It's a paralysis tick. Okay. So yeah, they brought him in and then the wife in the car noticed the tick on the dog's face just here. Wow, cool. Hmm. Okay, sweet. So classic yeah. kind of ticky. Classic tick. Okay, how do you feel about talking to the owners about tick paralysis? Yeah, really good. I've listened to you do it a few times. So. Okay. When it comes to the teaching side of, of, of what we do, we try to focus on pathophysiology, so focus on the reasons why disease occurs. So if our veterinarians understand why a particular disease occurs, then they understand why they treat the way they treat. And then they're better able to communicate to owners who ultimately need to understand what's going on, the whole process, 
how it happened, why we're doing this, what are the outcomes likely to be. So that's a, a big focus of what we do here, is understanding disease. Oh, hey, who do we have here? Yeah, Roy. Oh, what a little so Roy. had a dog attack, um, was attacked by another dog, and his ears are real close to him. Oh, Roy. I think he was in a, in a bad dog fight, and he sustained pretty significant traumas to his ears. The owners have brought him down because they think they see maggots. So, um, fingers crossed now, but we'll have to, we've given him some pain relief that will help settle down the, the pain and then we'll reassess after we've had a chat with the owners. How are you going? My name is Gerardo, hey? Good, how are you? Yeah, good. Thanks for being patient, bud. Right. I'll be the vet that's going to sort of continue on with, with Roy's care. Yeah. I commonly get asked, why did I become a veterinarian? And I can honestly say that I didn't want to become a veterinarian when I finished high school. It's not something that was even on my radar. So what I did is I went out and I worked in various jobs for five years. Then I realized that my passion was understanding things, learning how things worked. So I found myself in um, human medicine or the human side of things, doing anatomy and physiology. And then what happened is I transitioned into veterinary medicine because I felt that there would be more variety. Um, I could be the medicine clinician, I could be the surgery, I could do the surgeries, I could do dermatology, I could be the one looking down a microscope. And I'm very happy where I am and where my career is, uh, has, has um, led me to. I hope you liked what you saw. Stay tuned, there's more of these videos to come, more stories from the hospitals, and also a bit more about what we get up to outside of this place.